Behavior trees evaluate from top to bottom, left to right. In standard behavior tree implementations, this evaluation is done every frame or tick. This can lead to performance issues because you don't necessarily need to reevaluate the entire tree just to determine the currently active task. In Behavior Designer, there's an optimization called Conditional Aborts that allows you to selectively choose which task should be evaluated. In this video, we are gonna go over the Conditional Abort system. So to get started, I have imported the sample projects from Behavior Designer and opened up the Conditional Aborts scene. I've only disabled the canvas, so this is a completely fresh scene for the most part. And let's go ahead and take a look and see what it currently does. So if I hit play, and we can see that the behavior tree, it, it started, but right now um, the idle task is active. That's because it started with selector, selector returned to status of running, so then it went to the sequence, sequence then went to the stacked conditional, and within stacked conditional, we have this can see object task. Well, this can see object task, the goal of this task is to have this agent detect if this enemy is within sight. So the enemy is this red cube, and there it is on the scene view. So if the enemy is within sight of the agent, then can see object will return success. However, right now the enemy is not within sight, so the can see object return failure, which passes it up to sequence, sequence returns failure, and then the selector moves on to the next task, which is idle. And that is a task that is currently active. So that's all great except now you can also see that there's this X with the little circle and the arrow around it. And what this means is that this task is currently being reevaluated. Now this is being done using the conditional aborts system. So every tick, this can see object task is being reevaluated to determine if the agent can see the enemy and Right now, it has, it's returning a status of failure because it can't see it, and so that's why there's the X. Now, if we go ahead and hit play, and we wait a little bit, as soon as the, the cube becomes within view of the agent, you'll notice that the can see object task now returns success, and the seek task starts playing. It also aborted the idle task. The reason why I did that is because of the lower priority conditional abort that was set on the sequence task. So lower priority aborts, well, there, there are four different options if I click on this uh, dropdown. The first one, uh, none is the default, and that means that there's no reevaluation at all. Lower priority is a indicates that any branch that is lower priority to that current branch, then the conditional task beneath it will reevaluate. In this case, let me go ahead and stop Unity and hit play again so that we can see it at the very starting state again. All right, so in this case, uh, can see object, you'll notice, is reevaluating just like before, and the idle task is currently active. Well, the idle task is lower priority from this sequence task. The more the branches uh, to the left, that indicates that it has a higher priority. So because this sequence task has a higher priority than the idle task, that means the idle task is lower priority and the abort type set to lower priority will indicate that any conditional task beneath that conditional abort task uh, will reevaluate. There are a couple of things to note in that conditional aborts, they only work on conditional tasks. They can be recursive. So for example, if I had a sequence task, then a selector task, and maybe another sequence task, and they all had a status of, or an abort type of lower priority, then any conditional task beneath that final sequence task will also reevaluate. And then the last thing is that conditional aborts will trigger when the conditional task changes status. So it's not necessarily only going from failure to success, as in this case. It's also if the task was successful and then it returns a status of failure, that will also cause an abort. So in this case, let's go back to this lower priority. Because idle is a lower priority from sequence, that is why this can see object task is being reevaluated. Now the next abort type is an abort type of self. And what that means is any active task 
that is beneath the current uh, conditional abort task, uh, that will trigger or that will enable conditional aborts to occur. Now, the, the best example in this scene is if actually if I set it to both, and what that does is it means lower priority or self, then it will reevaluate. So in this case, let me go ahead and hit play. And right now, this idle task is currently active, and that again is because of the lower priority set on the sequence task. Um, now, if I hit play and I let the cube get in within view, we'll notice now that this can see object task, it has a check mark with a little circle around it within the arrow. And that is because of the self abort type. The self abort type will occur as long as there is an active task within the current branch of the conditional abort that is set. You can use these arrows, uh, the icon arrows as kind of an indicator for which, uh, how kind of how the conditional boards will reevaluate. So lower priority, it just has a arrow to the right, meaning any lower priority branch. And then the self has an uh, uh, arrow pointing down, meaning any branch within the, or any task within the current branch will cause the conditional task to reevaluate. So right now, you'll notice that it is reevaluating because the, the can see object task can currently see the enemy. It's going to keep returning a status of success. Well, let me go ahead and move this enemy a bit so that the next update, it will return a status of failure. So now I go ahead, I'll go ahead and stop hit and play. And you'll notice that, okay, now the agent can no longer see the the enemy because this can see object task returned to failure and it goes back to being an idle. So an abort had occurred there as well. Just for a comparison, let me set it just to lower priority of what we had originally. And now when I uh, hit play and then the enemy starts to move, I'm going to get the enemy out of view as the agent is currently seeking. And then we will see that can see object task is not reevaluated. So right now we have just a check with no circle around it and I'm going to move the enemies to be outside of the view and now I'm going to hit, hit play and we'll notice that okay this agent it since it's not reevaluating can see object because there is no self abort type set uh, it's going to just continue to seek towards the destination or towards the enemy. So that in a nutshell is how conditional boards work. There is one more feature that I want to show and that is related to event branches. So let me go ahead and add the on interrupt event branch and I'll move it up here. And then let's just, let's play a, let's, I don't know, let's, let's say a log statement saying that we will say abort. Um, the on interrupt, uh, branch event or branch task will allow us to to run some or to run a branch when an interruption occurs. Now I want to select which source of interruption um, this this uh, task should monitor and I want it to trigger when the idle task is interrupted. So I'm going to just select that task and now what I'm hoping will happen is when the idle task gets interrupted because of this lower priority abort. I want to see a log statement. And let me just rearrange a bit. Go and hit play. All right, so there's no log yet because no interruption has occurred. Gonna let the cube get in within view. Uh, okay, great. So an interruption occurred, an abort occurred on the idle uh, component or the idle task, which caused this on interrupt. Uh, event branch to trigger, which then played this log statement, and you can see we have abort here. So this this is actually a really useful feature if you want to, for example, clean up some logic uh, when a conditional abort occurs. So let's just say, for example, instead of idle, I had some patrolling tasks that also set some patrolling animation. Well, instead of the animation continuing to play because of the task, I can run this some kind of some cleanup code that maybe resets the animation state back to its regular idle or walking state if 
uh, this abort occurs. Uh, so yeah, the, this uninterrupt branch is really great for just kind of running some cleanup code or maybe you want to just have some extra logic that gets run uh, specifically when an abort occurs and it, it's a really uh, useful feature. So hopefully that helped explain how the conditional abort system works.